I'm going to continue what we were working on in class today and develop a sketch, an Arduino sketch, that can simulate a nightlight. And that's part of the homework assignment that's coming up uh, due at the beginning of next week. In order to put this in perspective, I've got a bit of code here that was available to students. Uh, we'll scroll through it before, but there's a section here. The loop function is empty. And the basic assignment here is to figure out what has to go into this loop function that will create uh, the effect that the uh, Arduino board is simulating a nightlight. To uh, put this, um, to get some plan here, let's, let's uh, open up a little outline that will indicate or that can guide our thinking. This is a very simple bit of logic. The first step is to configure both the NeoPixel, which will display the light, and the APDS9960 sensor, which will detect the ambient light. So the sensor measures how much ambient light there is, and if uh, there's not enough, the NeoPixel will turn on. The first bullet, the configure, would happen in the uh, global variable space where we uh, create the objects, one object for the NeoPixel, one object for the APDS9960 sensor, and then uh, possibly some bookkeeping in the setup function. That's the uh, first bullet. And the second bullet is what happens in the loop function. So we just keep repeating over and over again. We measure the light and then we compare it to a threshold. Uh, the threshold is a value of the light sensor reading that we've determined ahead of time that determines the difference between dark and light. So if the ambient light is less than the threshold, and these are in units of ambient light sensor output, so if the ambient light is less than the threshold, turn on the NeoPixel, otherwise turn off the NeoPixel. And that little bit of logic gets repeated over and over and over again. Here is the shell program, again, that uh, we're going to have to add code to. And the program at the beginning has the configuration and uh, of the APDS9960 sensor. Um, we include the code, really. That's the, the include statement. The Adafruit, this next second statement here, uh, creates an object called APDS. So we have like something like a variable called APDS, but it's more complex than a variable because it's, uh, it's an object and it has behaviors or methods. The next block here includes the NeoPixel library and it creates a NeoPixel object called OnePixel. So the Adafruit NeoPixel uh, constructor creates an object and with this equal sign we're basically giving the one pixel object some properties at the beginning. So this is actually both the creation and configuration of the one pixel object. There's a lot going on here. We've learned from uh, previous code that this is how we create the APDS sensor and then we've learned also from another previous code that uh, the NeoPixel was created like this. Um, I'm going to show you those codes here. Here is uh, called ambient light. So we developed this earlier. This uses the APDS 9960 sensor, and basically it reads the ambient light and prints it. That's all that does. Here is the Blink NeoPixel, and it's got uh, a bunch more stuff going on. We have to configure the NeoPixel, and then we turn it on and off. So uh, this code right here, is not ready. So this is the nightlight shell program. We have to add code here and then we have to probably add some more to the setup function. I'm going to put away these two sample codes and I'm going to start developing what we're doing. My advice is to not try to do everything all at once. Um, work on small pieces of the code and make sure that you can test those pieces before you add more complexity to it. So we'll be doing this uh, in a series of steps. So one way I use um, this tool to develop in steps is I actually write the comment statements that describe what my code is going to do. That helps me uh, build some structure and it sort of eases my brain into it. So one of the things I can do is start describing what I want the code to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is read 
the ambient light level. And then I'm going to decide uh, if um, ambient light level is less than some threshold. I turn on a NeoPixel. Otherwise, turn off the NeoPixel. And this uh, second uh, step of turning off the NeoPixel, we'll, we'll, we'll see that it's going to be necessary because once the NeoPixel is on, we don't simply skip the operation. We actually <clears throat> have to turn it off. And you'll see how that uh, plays out. So the very first step then would be, let's just read the ambient light level. Note that uh, we've got the code. We've got an APDS object here. We've got, um, we've configured it. So this we took directly from the ambient light sketch. And I won't go back to revisit all that. But one of the features of the ambient light sketch was that uh, we have this function in our uh, uh, in this sketch that returns the value of the ambient light. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to say that the result is level equals read ambient light semicolon, and I'm going to do do serial print level. That allows me to test just this part of the sketch. So I'll uh, save it and uh, compile. I see I have an error. Level was not declared in the scope. So scope refers to how much of the sketch is exposed to this variable. So really, we're going to keep it inside the uh, loop function, and I just need to declare it. So I'm going to say int level. And I could have seen this bit of logic by studying the ambient light sketch that I had working earlier. Compile. <clears throat> so the device is programmed. I'm going to go to the Tools menu and open the Serial Monitor. And I see a continuous string of readings. If I hold this, this, the feather up near a brighter light, it increases quite a bit. If I put my hand over it, it goes almost to zero or to zero. If I just leave it on the desk next to my uh, laptop, I get about a 70. So 70 is sort of office space desktop. I'm putting this in front of a brighter light. It's like 2000. And um, just leaving it down a little lower on my desk is about 36. So this seems to be working. So that gives me a clue about this idea of a threshold. So I could start programming the NeoPixel, but uh, I, let's break it down a little more simply than that. Let's use an if statement, but only print something to the serial monitor. So if level is less than threshold, open curly brace. And when I hit return, it automatically fills in. So I've got a closed curly brace and an open curly brace. I see if I select it, the mate uh, is highlighted. So if I select this one, that mate is highlighted. So I'm going to simply print a message. If it's if I've hit this threshold, I will turn on the NeoPixel. And to make it fit all in one line, I'm going to make this a regular serial print. Save. Got another error. Threshold was not declared. Oh, yes. So I need to define my threshold. Int threshold uh, has to be defined. But I also give it a value. So if I recall, um, about 70 was the desk. Let's just try 200 for now. And I'll make a note of this. <clears throat> Compile again. OK, I have a NeoPixel on. And if I hold up, which means that my level uh, here is 75, 70, 60, and it's less than 200. If I bring my NeoPixel over, and I get some crazy thing going on here. So what's happening? Uh, the value gets printed when it's above 200. And if I look at my code here, I only print the level without a new line. So it just spews it all the way across. Well, I'm not uh, using the, the printing to, it's not my goal. I want to do more than that. But I can see that if I did an else here, I can do serial print ln 
neo pixel off. So the level gets printed without a new line, and then I either print this message space space NeoPixel on or a message NeoPixel off. And that's determined, whatever message is print, determined solely by the local level. So we'll compile that and see if that changes our behavior. Um, it's now the NeoPixel says it should be on. I'm just I'm not turning a NeoPixel on, I'm giving a message. But if I move my sensor over to where it's above 200, I get the off message and on. So this is the right decision making. I've got the correct decision making in my code, but now I need to, uh, instead of printing a message, I need to turn the NeoPixel on and off. So I'm going to put this away. Um, let me consult with the Blink NeoPixel code. Um, so this is, I'm borrowing it from another sketch. The setup command needs to do some work. And then I use the pixel set color and show. So uh, I'm just going to copy this code over. This is what's necessary to start the NeoPixel. I'll put this in uh, after I've enabled the APDS sensor. Paste that in. And then instead of merely printing a message, I'm going to set my NeoPixel on. So this is the turn on the NeoPixel, copy. And I'll just slide it into this little block of code here. So I'm using the set pixel color method for the one pixel object. And I'm going to turn the new pixel off with the clear command. So now instead of merely printing a message, I'm actually going to do something, but I'm not done yet. I need to tell the new pixel to actually display the current value. So I set the color and I clear it depending on the level of the threshold. Or uh, sorry, the, the ambient level. So I'm going to save this. I know there's going to be an error here because if I compile this, I haven't defined R, G, and B. So I'm going to create uh, these other variables here, R, G, and B, and I'm going to give them values. And those values are going to be used when I turn the NeoPixel on. And I want it to be white, so I'm going to put just a regular simple white nightlight. I'm going to make all R, G, and B the same. I can line up the uh, comment statements to make it look a little tidier. And let's see how it behaves. Open up my serial monitor. Oops, it barked at me. Try again. So NeoPixel is on, and in fact, if I hold my NeoPixel up, it's on. But if I hold it up near the light, it'll turn it off. So uh, it's working. Um, now, I can simplify this code. I can clean it up a lot. Uh, I should add more comment statements. But this is basically it. Uh, the one pixel show command is outside of the if block. I could have put it in there, but I would need to put it in after each of these uh, method calls, one pixel color or one pixel uh, clear. So uh, I can just leave it out. And if I wanted to, I could add a delay to slow things down. But uh, that's basically it. I've started with an empty sketch, well, empty loop, and I added some code to configure the NeoPixel. I added some code to define the threshold, the colors I want to display, and a variable to hold the level. And that level is then the deciding variable whether I turn on the NeoPixel or not. That's it. I've got a simple nightlight.